Hi, it's Jeff here from Rhinoco Technology, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to connect a VIP Vision IP video camera, such as this one here, into a VIP Vision network video recorder via a power over Ethernet switch. Now, some reasons why you might need to do this is because either the recorder doesn't come with PoE ports inbuilt, um, as some of the professional series and ultimate series recorders don't. Um, or if for some reason you can't connect the recorder directly, whether that be because you've exceeded 100 meters away from the, from the recorder, or you're running via wireless gear or via a, a network connection that's already installed in the building. So what we're going to do here is I'll just show you how to connect. So what we're going to do, first thing is typically our IP camera is connected obviously via an ethernet cable such as this purple one here into our PoE ports on the back of our recorder. Now, as I said before, there are certain situations where this won't work. Um, so we'll need to install a network switch. So instead of plugging into these ports here, we're going to plug into the network switch. Now it's worth mentioning that this is, as I said before, a power over ethernet switch. So it's actually supplying power to the camera. Um, if you are using a standard networking switch, then you will need to provide power to the camera separately via this DC jack here. Um, some cameras will run on 12 or 24 volts, but the vast majority of cameras, particularly if you see a DC jack like this one, will only be 12 volts, so just be aware of that. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is connect our NVR to the PoE switch. So keep in mind that I'm connecting to the LAN port here rather than via the camera ports. Any time that you need to connect anything other than a camera directly to the recorder, you must connect via the LAN connection and not via the camera ports. Now, typically, your recorder is actually connected to a router such as this one here via the LAN port. Now, that's not going to work in this scenario So, since we need to use this port. So what we can do is unplug from there and plug directly into the switch. So we've got our router connected to our PoE switch. It's not going to damage it at all. It's not going to send it power, so that's fine. And then we're going to connect from our PoE switch into our recorder. Now, it'll work on any port. The connection here will work on any port. However, it is probably worthwhile plugging into our gigabit connection here, just so that we have um, sufficient bandwidth if we're running high megapixel count cameras. Now. After we've done this, uh, we do need to do some software configuration on the recorder. So as you can see here at the moment, I've, I've got another recorder set up um, with some cameras that are connected directly to the PoE ports of the recorder. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is log in. Now, depending on your recorder, you may see a pattern password such as this one here. You can use the pattern or most recorders you'll probably see um, a login screen, we'll need to log in, so put in your username and password, like so, and click OK. Now you're presented with the main menu. From the main menu, what we'll need to do is go to network first. So from this network screen now, um, some recorders look a little bit different to this, but the, the idea remains. So we need to, first off, get an IP address for this recorder which is in the same range as the existing network. Now, if you've got a router connected, which in most cases you will, um, you'll be able to set DHCP. And when you set DHCP, the router will hand you out an IP address within the range that you need to set. So now that we've got DHCP set, we can see the IP range that the recorder uh, has retrieved an IP in. So we've got 10.1.100.109 with a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0. Uh, default gateway is 10.1.30.1. Now, if we uncheck DHCP so that we can set a static address on this recorder, which is best practice, we can change this address to be something within the same network range, um, but hopefully outside of the regular DHCP range. So in this case, I'm going to set it up quite high because typically uh, DHCP ranges won't be up this high. So if I set it to 250, uh, the best thing to do is actually to ping this address. In most scenarios, you can just set it and the DHCP server will um, not reassign this address. You can leave the subnet mask to be exactly the same since that's what we want it to be and the default gateway to be the same as before. Now, keep this 
IP address and this range in mind. So 10.1.100.250. So this is the range we're going to set our IP camera in. So I'm going to go OK from there to save that. Now, make sure that you click Apply. Otherwise, these network settings will not be saved and you will lose them. So the next thing that we want to do is go to camera settings. So in the camera settings here, we can already see the two IP cameras that I've got plugged into a network switch. Um, however, you may need to click device search first to make sure that they come up. So you can see two IP addresses here. So the first one is uh, 192.168.1.108. Now this is an IP camera that I plugged in straight out of the box. There's been, it's not been plugged into any other network. Um, no one set any other IP addresses on it. However, if you have an, a camera which has been plugged in elsewhere, for instance, if it's been plugged into the back, into the, uh, the PoE ports of an MVR directly, you may find that the IP address is not um, the default of 192.168.1.108, and you'll have to change it, or it will already be changed. In both these cases, we're going to have to change the address. So the way that we can do that is by using the modify section. So if you see these two little icons around here, um, you'll see that that's actually a modify button. So if I click the modify button, this will actually allow me to change the IP address on a camera that's outside of my current range. So I'm going to set this camera to be in the same IP range as my recorder now is. So 10.1.100. I'm going to make this 251. It's important to note that you need to make sure that this address is not the same as your recorder, but it is in the same network range. Now I need to also change the subnet mask and the default gateway to be the same. So I'm going to change this to 10.1.30.1. Now, as I mentioned before, all of this information has been retrieved from the DHCP server. Just take a note of what, what we set before for the, uh, the IP address of the recorder. Um, important to note that we need to set this password up here. We need to enter the password. By default, it's admin for the IP cameras. Um, if you don't set this, it will not apply the settings. So just to go over it one more time, make sure your IP address is what you expect it to be. In this case, it is. Make sure static is selected. We don't want DHCP selected. Make sure static is selected and click OK. Now, as you can see, that IP address has already changed. So 10.1.100.251. I'm going to do the same for the one below it. So modify. Now, in this case, 10.1.100. Dot 252, I'm going to make this address. Make sure it's not the same as any other IP camera or device on the network. It's a very good idea to ping these addresses first, uh, particularly if you're on a corporate network. It's sometimes a good idea to talk to your IT admin. Um, however, it's usually safe enough just to pick an address, particularly on, on SMB and home networks. Now, as before, make sure that the gateway address is correct as well. 10.1.30.1. And make sure that we set the password. Again, make sure static is correct and click OK. Now we've got two IP cameras and they've both been set within our network range. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add these cameras. Now this is the same as um, adding cameras regularly. So I'm just going to check the box up the top and click Add. Now you'll see that two cameras have been added down the bottom section here. These are the cameras that are on the recorder and they've gone green. So now that they've gone green, that means that we're connected. Um, you can see the difference between these two cameras, the ones that are plugged into the PoE switch versus the ones that are plugged into the uh, ports directly on the back of the recorder. If you're seeing them show up as a port on here, then you probably haven't plugged them into the right spot. You very likely plugged them into the PoE ports on the back of the recorder rather than to the LAN. So just be aware of that. Now, I'm just going to right click to exit out. So I'm going to clear there and go out of the menu. You can now see that there's uh, two new cameras here. So if I full screen this camera, you can see, yeah, there you go. That's one of the cameras that we added. So that's uh, that's pretty much it for adding, adding IP cameras via switches. Um, as, as I mentioned before, just be aware that you must connect the camera. Cameras that are connected via a switch or via uh, any, anything else, you need to make sure that you're not plugging directly into the PoE ports. You are plugging into the LAN. 
Uh, as long as you get that step right and you set your IP addresses correctly, everything else should just, should just work. Uh, yeah, if you've got any comments or questions about this video, feel free to leave them below. Um, otherwise, yeah, just look out for more of our videos and thank you.